Come on. All over the building. Lift those hands and give God glory. Come on, speak well of him. God, you're awesome. God, you're wonderful. Our hearts cry. Be magnified in this your holy temple. In this your holy To praise and glorify Unified Oh, how we love you Yes, Lord Oh, how we praise you Oh, how we worship Oh, Lord Oh, how we love you Oh, oh
part right here. Open up your mouth and begin to bless the name of the Lord right now. Even though we mess up sometimes, he still loves us. He still keeps us. He still provides for us. He still favors us. Come on, open up your mouth and just begin to bless his name. There is nobody like our God. He's mighty. He's awesome. He's holy. There is nothing missing with him. There is nothing lacking in him. He's always there for us. He's, he's, he's so faithful. He's so loyal. There is safety in our God. Hallelujah. Oh, how we love. my worship every day every every time I wake up in the morning I gotta lift my hands and, and open my mouth because you deserve my worship you deserve my praise if you know he deserves it all over this room I need about 2,500 people to just begin to open up your mouth in this place just begin to give God what he deserves today you deserve my worship you, de you deserve my praise oh God so we give it to you Jesus my hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Is that your heart? Come on, tell us. So my And this is the reason why. Come on, raise it up and say, You dig it. Hallelujah. You dig it. Make them smile with our worship. Say, God, my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Say, my hallelujah. My hallelujah. I freely give it. To I freely give it. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. To my Savior. Now, come on, raise that voice. You deserve it. All over this room, fill this room with that you worship. Deserve you deserve, deserve Hallelujah to Jesus.
Good afternoon and happy Sabbath. Does anybody believe that God deserves all of our praise, all of the honor, all of the, the, the breath, the air in our lungs? He deserves it. I dare somebody to lift their hands in, in solidarity with me and praising God, lifting their voice. The Bible says, let everything that have breath Praise the Lord. He is worthy of all the praise, worthy of all the honor, worthy of everything that we can give him. So I dare somebody to praise God this morning. We just want to welcome you out this morning to the Bethel virtual worship experience here on YouTube and on our Facebook page via the link. We thank you so much for your presence this morning. We know that God has been awesome toward us, that God has seen us through some very trying times in which we're living in. He's continuously providing for us, continuously giving us everything that we need. He has kept our families together. He's kept our finances together. He's kept our minds in perfect peace. God is worthy of our praise and the honor due to his name. This morning, before we get uh, right into our worship experience here online this morning, I just want to pray for all those that are tuning in to our stream, all those that are tuning into our stream. There may be somebody that is struggling right now. There may be somebody financially struggling, uh, health-wise struggling, whatever your struggle is, I just want to pray for you this morning. So let's bow our heads this morning. Father God, you know what we need. As a matter of fact, you have the solution to our problems. So mercy and grace is what we're asking for this morning. We ask that you would answer our request, the things that we don't even know to pray for, according to your riches in glory. Father, Lord, for that person uh, that is tuning in on this stream, that is having financial difficulty, that is having mental struggle, that is having health struggle, that is having relationship struggle, whatever it be, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we are claiming your promises. Yes and amen. We are claiming that you can make it right. So right now, Father God, we ask that you would go and give peace to the disrupted situations, that you would go and make smooth the rough places, that you would make straight the crooked places. Father Lord, ultimately that your name would be glorified in our lives. So Master, Whatever it is you have to do to us, to do for us, we ask that you would do it in the name of Jesus. Whatever you have to do to save us, Father God, we give you permission right now on this Sabbath day. We know that you have what's best for us. You know what's best for us. So, Father Lord, help us to put our hand in your hand. And we will be careful to give you all of our praise. I ask that you would bless us through the remainder of our service this day. And let you be glorified, your people be edified, and the devil be horrified. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, amen and amen again. Again, we just want to welcome you out this morning to our stream. What I want you to do, what I want you to do in a very real way, you are helping us out. I want you to share this link on your Facebook page. I want you to share this link on your Instagram. I want you to share this link on YouTube. Text it to somebody. Each one reach one. We need to get this word out this morning. We want others to experience our worship and our praise uplifting the name of Jesus. And that's what we're all about here at the Bethel SDA Church. Lifting up the name of Jesus. It's not about the preacher. It's not about you. It's about lifting the name of Jesus higher. We're getting on with our service and we're moving right into our offering. And I want to remind everybody to continue to be faithful. God has continued to be faithful to us day in and day out. Some of us has, have not missed a meal and that is not because of our own ability to provide for ourselves, but because God has provided for us. 
Some of us are not out of a job and that's not because we, we know how to keep a job, but God kept our jobs for us. So we need to continue to be faithful in our giving, continue to worship in our giving. Uh, and there are two ways that we can uh, give and uh, 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 contribute to what God has called us to. Two ways. The first way is our Adventist giving account there across the bottom of our screen. You go to the Adventist giving website. There is a donation bar in the top right corner of the window and they will give you a selection bar where you can choose our church and you need to type into that selection bar Conway Bethel Seventh Day Adventist Church and our church will pop up and they will give you a, a couple of line items where you can donate and contribute uh, your funds to the cause of the church and the cause of God furthering this gospel. Also, we want to make available to those that use their cell phones to give we have a cash app account. We have a cash app account there across the bottom of your screen. It is the dollar sign, the dollar sign, SDA 8200, the dollar sign, SDA 8200. The Bible says in Luke that when we give, it will come back to you. Press down, shake it together, and running over, the blessings of God will be poured into your bosom. So let us take advantage of the blessings of God and the things God wants so earnestly to bestow on us by continuing to be faithful in our giving. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. And just before we get into our sermonic time on this service, this noonday, I want us to listen to the words of our meditational uh, song.
Amen. I understand better now that I'm here on my knees. This morning, I have a word from the Lord. Um, and it's coming from the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. Um, and we're going to look at chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4. And we're going to <clears throat> look at Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. And this is what the word of God says. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, and just as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and one Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. If you permit me this morning, if you permit me this morning, I'd like to speak under the topic entitled, We Are One. We Are One. Let's bow our heads. Dearly Father, Lord, we thank you so much just for the opportunity to come to you in prayer. We thank you that your mercies have been new every morning and your faithfulness is great. Now, Father God, like we've asked so many times before, we ask that you would speak your thoughts, that you would fill our hearts and blow our minds. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. This particular passage of scripture is very, very important for us in our Christian walk, in our Christian life, because it talks about the unity uh, that the body of believers should have. There should not be a, a, a time or a period uh, uh, of our Christian walk where we should be at odds with one another, where we should have fingers to point at this group or fingers to point at that group. We should always strive and always be in uh, the body of believers in a unified manner. Now, Paul was speaking to this church in Ephesus uh, regarding the different racial uh, walls that had been put up between the Jews and the Gentiles that the Jews didn't want to worship with the Gentiles because in their minds, the Gentiles were unclean and the Gentiles didn't want to worship with the Jews because in their mind, the Jews were savages or below them. It was a situation that was ugly. It was a situation uh, that we find very, very, very similar to the racial, racial tension that America is going through right now. Black against uh, white and white against black and brown and yellow against blue. Whatever is the racial tension going on in the world, it didn't just happen in our time. As a matter of fact, it happened back way back in the time of the Jews, in the time of the slaves being in Egypt, there was a differentiation because these were Hebrews and we are the Egyptian. They will be in Egyptian bondage for 300 and uh, for 430 years. They will have to go through a lot of stuff and they will be subjected because of the color of their skin or the ethnicity of their life, they will go through a lot of things. Racial tension is real. But I'm not preaching today about racial tension or racial divides. As a matter of fact, I'm preaching about the religious and worship uh, oriented divides in the Christian church that we find ourselves in today. 
See, I believe that this passage of scripture can not only be applied to racial tensions going on in the world, but I believe in the house of God, while there are racial tensions and racial divides, I believe it also can be applied to the way that we carry ourselves in congregations or in, in places of worship where we are, are the minority or we are worshiping different or we don't walk the same way that they walk or we don't praise the same way that they praise. We kind of in our minds and in our very own little boxes build up in our our list of things uh, that we are, are finding appropriate or things that we find inappropriate and things that we don't like. So that's why uh, I, 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 I'm pulling somebody's number on this stream this morning. That's why a, a lot of Christians today, young Christians and older Christians, sometimes find themselves church hopping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that church doesn't fit me well, so I'm going to go over here to this church. Uh, this church has drums, so I don't want to be a part of it. I'm going to go where they have the pipe organ and the piano only. I, I don't like how they carry out their praise over here in that church. They're too elaborate. They're praising God too loud. Or I don't like the fact that they don't have hymns over there. Or they sing too many gospel songs. So what we find ourselves in, instead of putting down roots and learning to be together and worship in solidarity together, worshiping the one God that Paul exclaims here in Ephesians chapter four, what we will find ourselves doing is church hopping. Uh, we find ourselves in a Goldilocks mentality where we go to the three bears house where uh, the, the first bed is is too hard and the second bed is too soft and maybe the third bed or the third church is going to be just right. You know what I'm talking about? We have to get to a place in our Christian maturity where we are not looking for entertainment in the house of God, but we are looking to be one with the body of believers. And that's what Paul is trying to get across to the church in Ephesus. And that's what he proclaimed and he preached and he st st uh, stood firm and founded with fortitude in his voice. And he exclaimed and he called out the apostles for being this Jew sect against the Gentile sect. We have to come together when it comes to this Christian thing, because I got news for you. Whether you want to hear this or not, my God does not see color. Mm. My God does not see color. He sees his sons and his daughters whom he died for and whom he loves. And we have to promote what God has promoted and given to us, which is unity in him. We are one. Unity together has a lot of benefits. But today, I want to spend a little time on how detrimental disunity can be to God's church. Can we spend a little time on it this morning? There are three ramifications of disunity. Three ramifications of disunity, and we're going to go through them quickly. I don't want to keep you long this afternoon. Three ramifications of Disunity. The first thing that we're going to look at this morning, uh, the first ramification that we're going to look at this morning, or this afternoon, forgive me, is the fact that the house can not stand when disunity is present. The house can not stand. Yeah, the house can not stand. Pastor, what are you talking about? Well, if you know your Bibles, and I know that you do, all those that are watching know that in Mark chapter three, Jesus uh, has been approached and has been accused by the Jewish leaders and religious leaders telling him uh, that Jesus is casting out demons by the help of demons. 
Jesus so wise in his wisdom and in his knowledge and being able to discern the hearts of those trying to put him in uh, compromising and and, uh, incriminating circumstances. This is what Jesus rebuttals. A house divided against itself can not stand. In other words, today, I want you to understand and consider If we do not carry ourselves and live as a unit of believers, there is no way we'll be able to proclaim and to say that we serve the same God. Yeah. See, with prejudices and uh, against those that don't worship or don't walk or don't look the way that we look, uh, it's impossible for us to say that The God of unity is our God. See, if we are disciples and followers of Jesus Christ and and we are supposed to love everybody and uh, not this brotherly love, that phileo love, but that agape, unconditional love, because we're supposed to love everybody unconditionally, that's what God calls us to. There is no way we can say well, I don't want to worship with them or I don't want to be around them. Uh, I don't want to uh, go to the same place that they go to because I don't like how they do something or I don't like. Uh, let me let you understand. And this is why Paul prefaces uh, this section of Ephesians this way. It comes with the, the idea of giving up what self desires. If we are to be a unit, if we are one in Christ, that means we cannot have our own agenda on our minds when we come together in the body of believers, because that means there is more than one chief. If we have our agenda in our minds coming together with the body of believers, that means one is pulling that way and one is pulling that way. In other words, the house is divided. The Bible says Jesus himself said the house divided can not stand. Talking about the ramifications of this unity. Ramifications of this unity. Look at this. We have to promote in our lives. We have to promote in the way that we worship together, in the way that we read God's word together, in the way that we commune with one another. We have to promote that we are one. We have to promote that. So the first thing that happens as a result of disunity, the house cannot stand. The second thing that we're going to look at this afternoon that disunity brings about is that the enemy, (laughs) the enemy thrives on divisiveness. The enemy thrives on divisiveness. First Peter five in verse eight gives us some things that we need to consider about this enemy that we have referred to here in point two. The Bible says that the enemy, the adversary, as it puts it, goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And if you are like me, you appreciate some nature shows. And the nature shows give a dynamic that we need to pay close attention to uh, when we consider the enemy that the Bible says is coming after us. The Bible uh, dictates that the enemy goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, but nature shows depict it in a way that makes it very real to us if we apply it to the enemy of the word. In nature shows, we see that lions will lie and wait in uh, in the tall grass and they will be looking at herds and uh, of wildebeest and they will be looking at herds of zebras and antelope and different things. They will be looking and they will be uh, scanning the different herds for the weakest link. 
or the one that is ill or the one that walks with a limp. They want to find the one that is easily uh, 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 overcome by the lions that are hunting. See, but if you pay close attention, once they find that one and they zero in on the weakest link and the one that is ill, the one that's walking with a limp, once they zero in on it, they begin to uh, corral the herd. They, they begin to run after the herd and spread panic throughout the herd so that the herd starts stampeding this way or that way. As they are running after the herd, if you look closely, they finding that weakest link, they will start to, look at this thing, separate or divide that weakest link from the herd. And everybody knows their safety in numbers. Everybody knows uh, when you're an animal, it's better to be in a pack. There's safety in the pack. And as the lions are dividing and separating that weak one from the herd, I want you to understand this is the same way that the enemy found in 1 Peter 5 and verse 8. This adversary, he's coming after us. And when we in God's house, look at this, friends of mine, when we're in God's house and we have uh, created tension and we promote division, this is what we're doing. We are absolutely making the enemy's job easier. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, the Bible dictates that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And when he finds an opening, <laughs> when he finds the weakest link, uh, when he finds a point that he can exploit, he wreaks as much havoc as possible. And this is what he's doing. The enemy's not a dummy. If he can get us fighting one another, if he can get us on a, a, a wavelength of disagreement all the time and butting heads all the time, then how much time do we have to actually do what Jesus has called us to, to spread the gospel to the world? How much time do we have to show people who Jesus is if we're fighting one another? We have to remember that we are one. I'm talking about the ramifications of disunity. So number one, the house cannot stand. Number two, the enemy thrives on divisiveness. The third thing that we're going to look at this afternoon that is a ramification of disunity and possibly the most detrimental thing to our spiritual lives is the fact that the Holy Spirit will not fall. The Holy Spirit will not fall. This is probably the most handicapping ailment and ramification of disunity. Whereas we are believing in our mind that our preference and our desires are to be elevated of what, uh, above what God has for us. And we are uh, going and church hopping and believing that our way is the best way and what I like is what God likes. And the fact about it is we have allowed our desires and our preferences to overshadow and block out uh, Jesus and block out what we should be doing. And as a result, there are so many different directions being pulled in God's church because I like this and I don't like that. I don't want to be over there worshiping with them. And I, I, I want to worship the way that I want to worship and because their way of worship, I don't agree with, I don't want to come together and I don't want to agree. And I don't want to be in the same uh, posture and atmosphere as everybody else. That puts us in a position where we are desiring what self wants 
and we are desiring our own wills to be enforced. And in this posture, the Holy Spirit can not fall. If we go back to Acts chapter two, we find uh, in verse one that the disciples are there in the upper room and the Bible says something very interesting before the Holy Spirit falls. The Bible says that they were all on one accord before the Holy Spirit fell in that room. I got news for you, friends of mine. If we desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit in these latter days, if we desire to be uh, out doing even greater works than those mentioned in scripture, dictated by Christ himself, if we desire to be able to speak to the sick and the sick be healed, if we desire to be able to provide for people's needs, if we desire to do good works in the name of Jesus, we have to be on one accord. And the only way that the spirit would fall is that we are on one accord. But if disunity has creeped his way into God's church, and it's in the hearts and in the minds of God's people, that means that the Holy Spirit cannot be present in that place. Because the Holy Spirit is only acting on one agenda. And that's not my agenda. That's not your agenda. That's not Donald Trump's agenda. It's acting on the agenda of Jesus Christ and God the Father. That's one agenda. And if we don't understand that we have to be on one accord for the Holy Spirit to be in us and, and start working the good work while this world is being, and the history of this world is being wrapped up. We need the power of the Holy Spirit now more than ever. But if we are not on the same page, if we're backbiting and buttoning heads every chance we get, the Holy Spirit cannot fall and the Holy Spirit cannot work in a, a mighty ways in us if we do not allow the spirit to come into a unified house. Yeah. That's why Paul says that we have to approach this thing differently. Look at what he says in verse two. This is how Paul is coming to the Ephesians. He says with all lowliness and gentleness with long suffering bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. In other words, <laughs> this is what it takes. This is what it takes in order to be unified in God's house. Stop trying to promote your agenda. Stop trying to promote how you feel about it. Stop trying to, 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 to get your selfish desires manifested in God's house. Stop trying to, to uh, say, me say do this instead of thus saying the Lord. You and I am not even the law in God's church. God's law comes from him, not even from uh, the GC, not even from the union, not even from the division, not even from our local conference. God calls the shots in his church. That's why Paul says this is one church, one God, one savior. It is one spirit, one body, one baptism. You are called to be in Jesus, our Lord, not called to be in the South Atlantic Conference. You're called to be in Jesus. Not called to have your own agenda. You're called to follow the will and the agenda of Jesus Christ. You're not called to, to, to manifest your desires in God's church. You are called to manifest God's desires in God's church. And what are God's desires? For us to feed the sick and nurse to help the sick and feed the hungry and clothe the naked and to spread the gospel to the world. That's what his desires are. But if we're fighting so much, we cannot even be unified when we serve people. God's desire for his church in this late day in history, God's desire for us 
is to break off the shackles of, of division, to break off the shackles of everything, all the red tape and all the paperwork of doing ministry and just do ministry. We can't do ministry if we're uh, against one another all the time. We cannot be successful if I have one agenda and you have another agenda. The only agenda that we need to be aware of and follow in God's church is the agenda of God. We are one. It ain't about me. It's not about you. It's about him. We are here to do the master's work. We are here to spread the gospel of the master. We are not here to enforce our preferences. We are not here to church hop to every other church. See, this is the problem. We look to go to church to get what we need. But church is for us to go and bless the name of the Lord. Because we have too much uh, uh, backbiting, because we have too much agenda in our mind, because we have too much program and will and desire of our own. We have not allowed our, our desires to be usurped by the desire and will of God. Because I want what I want. I'm going to do it this way. Because I like it this way, that's how I'm going to do it. God's way is the only way. And that's the way we need to follow. Friends of mine, we are one. It doesn't matter if you worship at Loris, Emmanuel. It doesn't matter if you worship at Bucksport, Bethel. It doesn't matter if you worship in Atlanta. It doesn't matter if you worship in New Jersey. It doesn't matter if you worship in Florida. We are one. And we have to be unified in Jesus. And if we will allow Jesus to hold us together, he will vindicate us when the time comes. He will make all the crooked places straight. He will dissipate all the confusion. He will make everything clear to us. But we have to follow him and him alone. Not any other source, not any other agenda. We have to be one in Christ. For those that want to be one, that those that want to be unified, those that are trying to dissipate all the disunity in their lives, whether it be in their homes, whether it be in God's church, whether it be on their jobs, you want to dispel all this disunity. You want a spirit of reconciliation. You want a spirit of unity. You want a spirit of togetherness. You want that spirit upon you. We're going to pray right now. And I want everybody to bow their heads because Paul gives us some things that we need to pray for. We need to pray for lowliness, humility. We need to pray for gentleness of soft spirit. We need to pray for long suffering, patience, and we need to bear with one another in love, endeavoring, look at this, to keep the unity of the spirit. Let's pray right now. We're praying right now for the unity of the spirit to reign free in our churches, in our homes, on our job, wherever we go. The unity of the spirit each to reign free. We're praying. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed. Dear Heavenly Father, we've heard your word. We are now praying in solidarity, standing together on one accord. Father, Lord, we don't want to allow disunity to disrupt the process and disrupt your plans any longer. Father God, help us to come on one accord with one another. Help us to come to a place where it's not our will be done, but your will be done. Lord, we are asking and praying right now for the loneliness and the gentleness and the long suffering. We're praying right now for those things that help us to bear with one another in love, that the unity of the spirit be kept in our minds, in our, our hearts, that will be kept in your church, in our homes, wherever we go. Father God, let your spirit baptize us right now. That's what we really need, Father God. We need a supernatural baptism of your Holy Spirit right now. That's what we need right now. Father God, if your spirit be in us, 
He will give us the power to do what you've called us to. So God, rain down your spirit on us right now. For all those that are in the stream that have left their names that want to be unified in you, I ask that you would rain down your spirit right now. Father God, if there's anything, any part of us, any reserved area that we have kept in our foul cabinets or in our closets under our beds that has has promoted disunity, that has kept us from being together and worshiping together, worshiping one God together, we ask that you would take it away from us. Anything that is keeping us from you, anything that is keeping anybody else from you, take it away right now. And Lord, save us when you come. And we'll be careful to give you all of our praise. And the people of God said amen and amen again. Thank you so much for tuning in with us on our stream.